Hey guys, welcome back. I'm uh, going to go back into uh, production of these uh, collets for the pecunier uh, tapping head. Um, so what I've done is, uh, this is a, a second one, but the, uh, for an example, a, uh, a, uh, this is for a 5C collet, and it's a collet stop, and it screws into the back of the 5C collet. And with that, you can set uh, depths of how far you want a part to go into the collet. So as you can see I've roughed the parts out here and it's a 3 8 collet and I've set the stop and I've set the stop so that we got oh, basically a little bit over an inch uh, out of the um, out of the unit, out of the collet. And you can see right here. So my plan is is to uh, uh, set this up and then go in and finish off all these uh, one at a time, just pop them in and out of the collet, make one setup go, one setup go. So we have to um, actually turn, turn the diameter down and then also turn at the very base of the unit, there's a small uh, recess and then uh, also put in this, uh, it's about a 50 thousandths uh, wide. Um, groove and then uh, drill and chamfer the units. Um, okay, so be back with you and we'll take a look at doing this. Alright, thanks. Well, I thought I'd film this uh, for guys that have never seen a, a 5C uh, collet closer. Uh, basically on the back side of your leg, the headstock, there's an adapter that bolts on um, that has holes and these holes are for the pin, let me get this guy down, there's a, there's a pin here that after you adjust the tightness of the collet, you lock that pin into the hole. And basically the, hopefully I'm not blocking you, but the uh, collet tube slides through, sits over that hub that's there. And then there's a pin here in the back and an arm that goes over. And that, uh, that secures the collet closer from, from uh, moving. And then you're basically ejecting the collet, uh, tightening and, and loosening the collet by pulling back and forth on this lever. You adjust the tightness of the collet. You can see some dogs here and there's a there's a uh, taper on this cone and those tighten and when you pull that's what locks the collet, it pulls the collet back. Um, so I thought I'd show that uh, pretty simple setup. Uh, here I'm just showing you the front, the chuck's been removed and uh, lays vary. Uh, this, this chuck uh, mount is called an LOO, um, it's a threaded on. So there's a nose protector that goes on, and that just screws in place instead of the chuck. And then there's an adapter piece uh, for the collet. And it's, uh, I don't know if you can see inside there, but there's a tang right there. And that tang is what lines up with the uh, relief in the collet there. So when you put the two in, it locks the locks the collet from spinning. So this piece basically just gets put in the front, and then your actual collet that you're going to be using, you go ahead and line it up, and then you start to thread. My hand's in the back right now, turning the back nut and tightening it in. You just continue to tighten this back back piece until the lever starts to lock as you pull the lever back. You can, I think I think you might be able to hear that. And release it. I can pull it. Lock it. I can't. Release. I can pull it in and out. 
lock I can't. And now that I have the collet stop in there, each time that I put it in, it's going back to the same, same exact spot. Um, so all of them will be repeatable. And then once, once uh, that setting's secure, then this pin in the back, you drop it into place into those multiple holes and it'll lock in place. Okay, what I'm going to do now is just uh, go ahead and clean up all the ends so they're all the uh, parts are the same uh, same length. So I'll end up using the travel dial uh, to uh, assure that everything's the uh, same same length. <laughs> I had to go find where I left all the parts. Okay, we'll set up for the next step. Okay, next we'll just chamfer them all.
set up for the next step. Okay, next we'll uh, center drill. Get them all get them all center drilled at the same time. to the next step. Okay, the next item we're going to do is uh, I'm going to cut this groove right here. So that groove is 50 thousandths wide, it's 25 thousandths deep, and it's uh, 65 thousandths back from the uh, end to the uh, edge of groove. So what I'm going to use on this is, uh, uh, it's called Thin Bits. Um, this set happens to be 31 thousandths to 50 thousandths. I've put the 50 thousandths one in there. It's a high-speed steel. It's not a carbide insert, so we'll see how it'll do. It's similar to this holder right here. Um, uh, actually, I bought this one and the one that's in the lathe right now I borrowed. I borrowed two of them, and I'm planning on building these. Uh, these, these sell for around $80 a piece unless you can find them on a deal on eBay. Uh, just for the holder. Okay, so we'll give it a shot here. So I've already, uh, I've already um, uh, got the tool in position, got to the face, moved it over the 50 thousandths, moved it over the 65 thousandths. So we're going to touch off and then uh, go 25 thousandths deep. Okay, here we go. Let's turn on the uh, machines.
running a little too fast. Okay, well, you can see that I was running it too fast in the beginning. Um, no different than a parting tool, kind of, in a sense, but all right, live and learn. Okay, the next uh, process in moving on on finishing up these uh, collets is I need to do two things. One is uh, I need to relieve the shaft here by about 75 thousandths and then down at the bottom here there's about a 15 thousandths relief so I've set up uh, the travel dial and uh, I've already moved over the required distance to get to this edge right here and what I'm going to do is plunge with the uh, plunge with the cutoff tool and go down the 75 thousandths back out and then go back uh, go further down here and I've set up this indicator to locate the second cut uh, down at the bottom here. I'll end up finishing back the other way later uh, but right now I just want to go ahead and get it marked. Um, okay so let me get started on this.
touch off there. Be a little light helps, huh? So here we're going to go in uh, 75 thousandths. down to the other the other cut which is only 15 thousand I've got the travel dial set up. Uh, you can't see it. It's off to the right on the on the bed for this uh, location.
Okay guys, I'm back. Uh, you can see I've turned one off camera. I'll do the others on there. But uh, fixed the tool bit and uh, I've cut the, uh, made the cut there. So we'll uh, pop it out and do the, uh, the next two. Okay, so the next uh, next item of business will be to uh, go ahead and drill the correct hole for the uh, tap. The, those will be different sizes, and then also to uh, to uh, drill for the tap and then chamfer uh, chamfer the hole. Also, there's there's two holes that have to be drilled. Uh, one for the tap and then one for the bottom hole for the brooch. So we'll drill the bottom hole first, which is basically a little over an inch and 200 thousandths deep, and then come back in and drill the, the tap hole. And then once that's complete, then it can go over to the mill and start cutting the slots and cutting the flat. Okay, so got three of them, destroyed one in the process.